פרק 24, צ'פטר 24, משנה א'. מי שהחשיך לו בדרך בערב שבת. Somebody is traveling in a caravan and he's traveling on Friday night, on Friday afternoon, let's say. He's thinking he's going to come to town before Shabbos and the caravan is late and they're not coming to town before Shabbos. So what should he do now? Now he has money. He's got lots of money in his pocket. So what should he do? Noten kisol enochri. He should give his money to a nanju. Mi bod yom when it's still Friday. Veyesh mefarshim and there are those who say afilu mishet techshach. Some say if you didn't give it from when it's still Friday, you can still give it on Shabbos, even though it's mukze. You can still give it on Shabbos. Umevoar atam bagmara and the reason is given in the Gemara. לפי שאין אדם מעמיד עצמו על ממונו. Because a person doesn't endanger himself for his money. כלומר, אין אדם רואה ממונו הולך לאיבוד ונמנע מלהצילו. It says a person doesn't see his money running away and he's not going to save it. ואם לא נתיר לו ליתן כיסו לנוכרי, it says if you're not going to give him permission to give his money to an anju, יביאנו בידו, he's going to bring it in his hand, ויטלטלנו ארבע אמות ברשות הרבים, and then he's going to carry him four אמות in the public domain, and this is, we already said, that this is prohibited on Shabbat. So, it's interesting, uh, you know, Rabbi Shisterman gave a story of a couple in New York, as they call him, because he's on the West Coast. Four o'clock, Shabbos is in an hour, and then I'm stuck on the freeway going to northern New York. Mm-hmm. what to do. He says, pull over. <laughs> he, says, he says, you should have thought about this before. Uh-huh. But I don't know what he did, you know, get rid of your money. You, you, you know what, I know some people who, 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 who happened to them. Lock your car, quick, you know. I, I, I tell you what some people did, yeah. that, 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 I know, that I know. Some people landed in New York, and it was, they were supposed to land at 3 o'clock on Friday, and they landed at 6 o'clock on Friday, right. afternoon. And Shabbos is coming at 6.30. And they've got the wallets and everything with them. So what did they do? In uh, the airport, there's a UP... No, even better, there's UPS. There's like, uh, or, or mail. So they took the wallet, they mailed it to, to their address, they left the bag. You know, you can leave your bag, nothing happens. And they walked to Crown Heights. It's a three hour walk. You know, it's a three hour walk, but it's doable, you know. And then they weren't stuck with the money. They didn't want to leave the money in the... Oh, I, I don't think the, 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 the problem is they couldn't even wait for the baggage to come because they didn't know if the baggage is going to come for them to be able to put the wallet there. Right. Because the wallet is mukze. But since it's just mukze, the, the sage just says like this, look, we're going to... If we're not going to allow the person to give, we decreed on this mukze stuff. It's our decree. So if we're not going to allow the person to give it to a non-Jew, then there's going to be a problem all that he... N- not all Shabbos. He says, we know the nature of people. A lot of people, even religious people, sometimes people will... You know, everybody who has a business knows. Sometimes you carry diamonds and things. A, a jewel merchant or a money merchant, he's, be, he's been gone for, I don't know, six months. And he's got money for six months. The test of not carrying it on Shabbat or throwing it away is that sick. His, his kids are going to die. It, 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 in his mind, he's thinking, Pikuach Nefesh, people are going to die. It's not true. People are probably not going to die. They're going to suffer a little bit. But you will tell yourself and you will bring yourself to carry it. So you say, since we know what people's mind on money, we're going to tell you, go to it. Today, we don't have this problem so much. At all, almost, because nobody carries cash with him. Everything is credit card, it's safe. Yeah, but in the old time, you would carry a year's salary in your pocket, especially if a traveling salesman. Where will he, where will he keep his money? In the coat somewhere. You know, they would have all kinds of things, of places to hide them. Okay, what happens? Im any monochri, he's traveling by himself. There's no nanju 
to go with him. Or, Eino ma'amin la nochri, or he knows, well, I'm going to give him the money, I'm not going to see this money ever again. Manichehu ala chamor, he's still allowed to put him on his donkey. He can put him on his donkey. Bagmara ma'vio, shemanicho kiso ala chamor, mishetechshach shu ma'alech. So he puts his, uh, his money on the donkey, the donkey has saddles, you know, big saddles, and he puts it over there. And whenever the donkey, because they're walking in a caravan, whenever the donkey will stand, so he takes it off from the donkey just before the donkey stops. In other words, in that manner, so we discussed this before. In order to be obligated from the Torah, from the Torah, yeah, you need to uproot from a stable place, from a place, and you need to put it down in a stable place. But w- when the donkey is walking, you're not uprooting from a stable place. It's not considered a stable place. So the Therefore, it's more lenient to take it while the do- donkey is walking. He says, don't wait until the donkey is standing and then take it from him, because that's called up- uprooting, yes? What if you're homeless? Like, that, that is your only form of living. Like, you live in that caravan. Same thing. You, have to, you still have to live this way on Shabbat. Shabbat comes in, that's the way you live. She'im loken, harei over mishum mechamer. And then he's also... Um, going to do the melacha of leading a donkey. Shneemar lo taase kol melacha atau bemtecha. It says you shouldn't do any work, and your donkey shouldn't do any work. Your animals shouldn't do any work. Vedarshu eizu melacha haasuyal yadei adam bemato. It says what kind of um, job does the person does and his animal? Is that when the animal has um, any kind of object on it, and the person puts it on it. But he's only do- allowed to do this trick with the donkey when he doesn't have an anjo with him. But if it has a nanju with him, it's preferable that he's going to give it to the nanju and then put it on his donkey. What's the difference? The, both the, the, so it says the donkey is more commanded to keep Shabbos than the nanju. So it says, what do you mean the donkey is more commanded to keep the Shabbos than the nanju? How is that possible? It says, not that because it's a donkey, because it's yours. And it says, if you have an animal, that animal is supposed to keep Shabbat. Your animal is not to keep Shabbat. So it's like your son for bar mitzvah, the transitive property applies from him to you. And you're, you're that's right. right, that's right. It, it's an extension of you. Your possessions are an extension of you. Very good. But you don't own the non-Jew. And therefore, since you don't own him, yeah, he's not commanded to keep anything of the Shabbat, while your donkey is commanded to keep Shabbat. His donkey is not commanded to keep Shabbat. Your donkey, you are not allowed to use your donkey for Shabbat purposes. What happens? You came to a yard in the outside of town, to the first yard outside of town. Din This is a different um, rule. This is already not discussing with somebody who puts his money on the donkey. This is talking about anybody who comes in a caravan, right? He's not carrying money, or he is carrying money, I don't care what he's carrying, and he has a fully loaded donkey on him, with him. And his donkey is full of objects. The Mishnah comes to teach us. This is the first opportunity where he can guard his, uh, his possessions. And this is the, the first opportunity that he can guard his possessions and he can leave his possessions over there. Notel beyado me'alachamor. He's allowed to take with his hand from on top of the tonki. He's only allowed to take the vessels that he will need for Shabbat. He's not allowed to upload the donkey completely. 
only the vessels that you, you will need on this Shabbat, shemutar letaltelam b'Shabbat, that he's allowed to remove them on Shabbat. For example, his food, he, need, he wants to eat, this is Shabbat. Yeah, his cup for Kiddush, he can, keep, he can take for Shabbat. V'she'enam nitalim b'Shabbat, what about all the other things? So, that, so he's outside of town. He comes to the first yard where he can camp. Right. He's going to stay there the entire Shabbat on that yard. And if he got there after Shabbos, he can only take what he needs for Shabbos. The rest of the donkey is going to be working. Wait, 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 wait. We, we, we didn't get there yet. In other words, everything on the donkey is muktze, you're not allowed to touch. Right. Unless you have a use for them for Shabbat. Right. So for everything that you have as a use for Shabbat, you're allowed to touch. Now the rest, you're not allowed to touch. But the donkey is suffering. Right. You still have the problem. So we, 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 we still, I don't know if it's considered to be walking, but you don't want it to keep the, right. on the donkey the entire Shabbat. V'she'enam nitalim b'Shabbat, and those that are not there on Shabbat, ha'dvarim she'asur letartelam b'Shabbat, you're not allowed to touch on Shabbat. Matir et ha'chavalim, what do you do? You untie his saddlebags, from, you know, she'kshurim be'em ha'dvarim alalu ala chamor, v'asakim noflim elem, and all the saddles falls on the side. By themselves. Bagmara. So the, because you're not allowed to touch them. Right. Yeah. Bagmara Amru, in the Gemara they said, Sheim hayu basakim dvariya mishtabrim. Why happened if you had vases? You know, Chinese vases, Ming vases in, the, in those things. It's going to break. What do you do then? You have to take them out and take them out. Vasakim hayu ktanim. So it says, and if the sex were small, Mavikrat. Karim veksatot umaniach tachtem. You're allowed to put pillows underneath it. Vastakim noflim ala karim. And then the saddlebags would fall on the pillows. Sheharei im irtze lishlof et akar sholef. And it says that if you want to take the pillow underneath it away, you're allowed to do it. It says, why is it, is it concerned? We already made the ruling, if you remember. You're not allowed to take a vessel on Shabbat and take it out of his use. So he says over here, you take a vessel, and now p- things fall on it on Shabbat, and these things are mukze. That means you're not allowed to move, that you made this vessel not usable in Shabbat. And that's not allowed to be done. But it says over here, that's not what's happening. Why not? Since it is very light sex that are falling on them, in other words, you're not nullifying the... the, the, the the cushion from his use. Aval im ayu asakim gdolim. But if, in other words, you can still sit on it, on the cushion on the other side. Because a small sack fell on it. You know, it's, still, it's still usable. But if it takes out the whole pillow now, you know, it's a big sack. Aval im ayu asakim gdolim. Asu laniach karim ekzotot kedesh polim. You're not allowed to put um, pillows underneath it so in order for the sex to fall on them. She'en mevatlim kli meichano, because then you, know, you cannot sit on the cushion. There's no other use for it. So therefore you're not allowed to do it. Ve'arambam kotev, the Rambam writes, Hayu asakim gdolim umeliim kli zchuchit. What happens, practically, the Rambam says, if you have uh, glass inside big sex, how are you going to take it down from uh, the donkey? Ve'chayote, it says, porek benachat, it says you still take it off, you take it off the donkey. In other words, t- tie it off and lay it carefully. You allowed, I will, I'll even allow you to lay it carefully. It says why? It's mukze. So it says why? Mikol makom lo yenicham sham al gabei behema mishum tsar balei chayim. It says because you're not breaking enough Shabbat. This is not you're not really breaking Shabbat. And there's another problem no, that is. Right. No, not destroy things. Destroy things you're allowed to. If you're not going to write it, you're not going to build it. Yeah. And the problem over here is you're causing pain for an animal. So causing pain for the animals out trumps this, muk, this small little muktzer rule for Shabbat. Not a big muktzer rule, but a small little muktzer rule. In other words, you untie it and you lay it down carefully. You're allowed to do that. Yeah? Because you're not really... Bu- it's a muktze rule over here. It's a, a, a rule that the rab- Rabbanim, the sages brought in. It's not a rule from the Torah. It's a touching rule. 
touching rule says you have to do it because the pain for the animal out trumps the what you're breaking on Shabbat, yes. 